Davis. Yay! 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 My son is missing. Lynn and Tannenbaum has helped us a lot in raising funding, and we have enough funding that we put together a very small team at the Stanford Genome Technology Center. Um, and we've been doing experiments. Uh, this, little, this small team we put together is, uh, is really excellent in doing research. Uh, and we are making progress. Yay! Now, it's very clear what's needed. Uh, we need more people doing research in this area. I don't want all this money just to fund my own lab. I want to recruit other people in other labs that are specialists in things that need to be looked at. And, and we are now doing that. Yeah! I think that we're very close now to finding a molecular diagnostic marker. I think we have a, a bit of an understanding of what this disease is. A lot of the ideas that have been around about what this disease is, I think, are wrong. And it's only because they look at one of the symptoms. I think what this disease is, is a fundamental shutdown of the energy generation system in the body. And we can see that from all the molecules that we look at. So our type of research is collect massive data. And we have developed a lot of the technologies that, in fact, are, are allow you to see massive amounts of data. And we have the fantastic people to analyze that data. And it really looks like it's a mitochondrial problem. And, and in fact, it doesn't generate very much energy. And that can cause almost all of the symptoms that we see. We can make a model for that and explain almost everything that everybody sees. It explains the immune system problems, it explains the brain system problems, and so forth. Now, the problem is, of course, we have to figure out exactly what it is and what's gone wrong. How we need more people to do that. And then we need to figure out a way to undo it. We need to figure out a way to reactivate the energy generation system in the body. I'm optimistic that we can do that now that we can begin to understand what the problem really is. And so, in fact, we are actively pursuing looking for uh, compounds and drug companies that might offer some help in this. Uh, we want to do this on a fast track basis. So we want to try to figure out what it is, figure out a way to do the, the diagnostic, and then look for things that might treat it. And we want to do that as quickly as possible. I do not want to wait another 30 years. Yay! But, but this is not going to happen without what? Government funding! Absolutely. And I've had a lot of uh, fights with them about this. Uh, I don't think they actually understand research. Uh, the two grants that I put in, they didn't like it because it had no hypothesis. I said, of course not. What you have to do when you start looking at a new disease is make observations and figure out what it is. And from that, you make some hypothesis to then do a test. And they have it all wrong. And they, they said they turned down a lot of grants because they don't have a proper hypothesis. That's not the way to do this problem. Uh, when we launched the Human Genome Project, we did not have a hypothesis. It was incredibly successful and is totally revolutionizing medicine right now. So it's going from one treatment fits all to personalized treatments. And that is absolutely what we need for ME-CFS. We think that probably a lot of the patients are slightly different in their behavior in this shutdown and, and the consequences of it and probably do need specialized treatments. Once we figure out what it is and in some treatments, we also have to figure out a way to just disseminate all of those ideas to the medical community so everybody can get treated. That's a, that's a daunting task, and that's not going to happen without what? Absolutely. But I am up, upbeat and optimistic that we will get somewhere uh, if we can just get. Absolutely. Thank you. 
all need to pay Whitney Dayfield a great deal of gratitude. He, every week we take a blood sample from him, and that blood sample is what we use to analyze. And uh, we have been taking a, a, a blood sample every week for a couple of years now. And almost all of the data that we have collected are coming from him. And he doesn't object to this at all. And so he's been uh, an inspiration to us that he's willing to do whatever it takes to solve this disease. Thank you. I want to say I live at Rossmore, which is a senior community in Walnut Creek, and we raised a thousand dollars for you. Yay! And I have the check in a that plastic bag by the wheelchair. Oh, but you <laughs> so, have it in your hand. And I also have it in my hand to your office. You raised it. We raised it. Raise your hand if you're from Rossmore. There's several of us here. They did it. Okay, I need Judy, Marilyn, and Corky on the stage, please. Thank you. We, we can't thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you.